This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my midweek video for Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. Uh, still an amazing amount of material to cover given, you know, just that we did a video a couple days ago. But first and foremost, uh, some new information. Uh, if you caught the last video, you already know about this, but not everyone catches every video, unfortunately, and not everyone's on the stream every day. So I started a new thing. It's uh, a new function that's available on Twitter called Super Follow. It's $9.99 a month, and I'm posting some new exclusive content on there. I post trade ideas, some key levels. I've been doing video updates after the market. I'm curious to get some feedback on that, but so far uh, the feedback has actually been pretty positive. Uh, I'm going to be doing some live Fed Day analysis. Uh, you'll get priority requests. I'm probably going to do some spaces. Uh, talks once this you know service gets a little bit further along uh, I'll get to follow you and uh, it makes for some easier communication but um, it's where the party's at for sure and I'm gonna be using this uh, more and more often it's very seamless uh, you, when you go to basically create a tweet you can toggle you know your audience and I could just click uh, everyone or super followers and I'm doing special posts for super followers so it's a great add-on product um, to the existing video service as well as the DM service it's not a substitute for any of them but it's a definitely a co great complimentary uh, service and if you can't afford or you know you're looking to you know try out my kind of more exclusive content it's a good way for you or for friends if you're looking to recommend them anyhow there's that so try out the super follower i obviously you can cancel at any time if you're displeased for some reason but i, I just if you're you know if you watch my videos i'm sure you'll love it so there's that all right so a few things to consider uh, this is sort of going to be the theme i kind of came up with this um meme on the fly because of the jobs report, and I kind of already see the way the media is going. They're going to be pushing this idea for a potential August emergency rate hike if the jobs data, and actually also um, next week we get an inflation read if that comes out hot. So they'll be pushing that, and that'll pr probably get people all nervous. So there's always that to consider. So not out of the woods just yet. I've never, you know, the media has been pushing this idea that the, there's been a Fed pivot and that the market thinks there's a Fed pivot? No, I, I'm not of that opinion. I've told you guys that I'm, I've never been of that opinion, and maybe the media is, and they look for you know daily narratives, but mine was that we have a honeymoon from the Fed because there's no August meeting, and in the absence of that, we could see some type of a you know little melt-up. Uh, the problem with that is, is now we've kind of got it, and we're already into some key levels, and there may be some resistance here that we're, we're actually into. So I don't think there's just going to be a straight up move. And of course, we've got to wait for the jobs number. Easy way to trade the jobs number is similar to a Fed day. Just use the jobs day range as a gauge. Inside the range is neutral. Above it is long. Below it is short. Um, pretty, pretty simple. And we'll, um, of course, have some updates on levels and my take on the jobs data in the weekend video, if, if not sooner with uh, intra-week um, updates. I'll see if I'll do something for super followers maybe right after the morning report. Again, another added bonus content there. All right, so as far as the uh, VIX goes, we talked about this in the weekend video that we had a bit of a breakdown, but I said anything over Friday's high was a short on the market, and here we are, boom, boom, up again. So we're at the 20 MA and 200 MA confluence, a little bit of a back off, but I, I think there's a very straightforward setup here. Uh, if we're inside range, to me, it's just neutral. Anything above the, let's just say, Tuesday high, I think could come up to the 100 MA and more likely the 50 MA, which has been resistance, and that's currently at 26.62. And, you know, if we get some really crazy jobs data, you know, and there's a lot of inflation, maybe we even work our way up to the triangle high back up in 31s. But if we, for some reason, lose the Tuesday low of 22.66, it's possible we roll back over again and maybe even make it down into the higher teens, into the 19s or even the 18s, and then there would be an opportunity. But it seems to me price wasn't comfortable being below the, I guess, the triangle. And often when there's failures of triangles, meaning if you fail to break out to the upside, you eventually rotate to the other end. And here we had a failure to break out to the downside, and there could be some rotation back up to the upper end. Again, we're still in a bear market. 
Uh, things have not changed really dramatically at all in any way, shape, or form. We still have inflation, although, yeah, there's a lot of pullback with regard to that, but the headline is still too high. And I think the Fed is, you know, kind of hell bent on still trying to hike rates, even into a slowing growth, until the employment picture breaks, which could be sooner than not. As far as the sentiment goes, I think we also just got a little, um, what was the term Dennis Gartman used to use? Sporty? Getting into Sporty Spice, getting into um, into the week, we had come up from 45 to 52. Granted, it was a little bit of a small read the last couple of weeks, you know, summer doldrums and all that. But these basically came directly from the bears and there was some capitulation. And as you guys know from prior videos, if you've been watching me for a while, often the first test of 50% leads to some type of a back off. So there's always that. Uh, as far as the CNN gauge goes, this had been at 37 a week ago. We got to um, 40 the prior close, and here we're at 41. So this even had still some incremental improvement. And a month ago, we were at 24. So there's been a pretty big ramp back up, but still not quite to the 50% just yet. So maybe there's a little more room in the money managers. Uh, I was looking at the jolts today. That wasn't all that impressive. Um, we had some PMI and ISMs, you know, but the big, the big McGill is going to be the employment situation. And of course, you know, we, we got these Fed, Fed talk hitting the tape today. I think it was Mester and Daly and Evans. And, you know, they all kind of um, hinted that more rate hikes are to come. And then, of course, we have um, Bullard. At, I think he's at uh, before the market tomorrow. And when I say tomorrow, I mean Wednesday. And I'm sure he'll be a little hawkish, too. So there's always that to look forward to. Um, lower into the jobs number is probably better than coming in on the highs the old Costanza setup. But I have to tell you, I was looking at the GDP, um, the Atlanta Fed GDP um, numbers, and this is this is pretty bad. I mean, remember I told you before the, the recession was official that the Atlanta Fed, you know, this was almost a month before the numbers came out, basically came out and said we were at negative growth, and it, it turned out to be the case. And now they're only modeling 1.3%, and that's, you know, down from 2.1%, which is pretty crappy as it is considering you've got inflation running at eight nine percent so um not good zero hedge i think actually here had an article about that also i'll post links to this in the description below both the atlanta fed and the zero hedge article that you want to read and i'll just tell you uh they better hope it's 1.3 percent because if it's a negative number again if they have to revise it down again and it's negative, that would be three quarters in a row of negative growth. And then, you know, if we get the fourth quarter of negative growth, we're officially in not only a recession, but in a depression, uh, which is, you know, a quote unquote technical depression. Listen, two quarters back to back of negative growth is a recession, four quarters back to back of negative growth is a depression. And there's no, you know, spin on it, whether employment is staying good or not. I still think there's tons of layoffs that are coming. And uh, I think, unfortunately, they're going to kind of all hit it once. It's going to be like the jobs report's okay, okay, and then it's just going to be like, bam, you know, like all of this happened. And I guarantee you, all the geniuses on TV who are saying, you know, egging the Fed on, you know, oh, hike the rates, hike the rates, they're all going to turn coat. Like Kramer, I, I guarantee you, he'll be the first to say, oh, they should have known, they got too aggressive, and, you know, now we're, you know, they, they should have known better, they're hiking into, you know, slowing growth. I'm telling you that now, I've been telling you that for, since they started this. They made the mistake of ending the taper too soon, hiking rates too soon and then too aggressively. Fed should have been doing this last summer, not this summer. And um, we're paying the price for it now. I mean, I think they missed their window and they probably should have just stuck to the, to the plan. And now I'm hearing a lot of, you know, some pretty smart people like Kyle Bass, who I have a lot of respect for, saying he thinks that next year they're going to be cutting rates. Uh, it's very possible because, you know, it seems to be the inflation is pulling back a bit here. A lot of commodities have come in and uh, you're starting to see pullback in housing. I know from, you know, mortgage data, that number, the, that those numbers have really collapsed pretty much. And... Um, what the Fed can control, they've sort of already controlled, and the rest is sort of, I don't want to say up to nature, but up to, you know, if there's supply chain shocks again with China, and this Pelosi visit clearly didn't help, I'm sure they're going to do something tit for tat. But um, not not a great situation, I mean, as far as the food and as far as the um, oil goes. And what's even crazier is this inflation reduction bill that uh, Manchin and Schumer are cooking up. 
it's basically just build back better and it's going to be more inf- more inflation they're raising taxes which is exactly what you should do or I should say exactly the opposite of what you should do in a recession you should be cutting taxes if you're particularly if you're raising interest rates that was the Ronald Reagan Paul Volcker um, method you know that while they were raising rates they were cutting taxes and here they're not only looking to raise taxes, but they're also raising rates and doing more spending. So it's just, it's absolutely insane. And what's even crazier is that we need more fossil fuels, obviously, to, to you know, make up for the um, oil and gas uh, deficits we seem to be having here. And they now want to take another 2 million, almost 2 million barrels off the market with this Green New Deal nonsense. So we, we got rough times ahead, rough sledding for the next two and a half years until um, hopefully we get a, a big change in the White House, maybe back to the, uh, the prior administration, which uh, was much better on these issues. All right, so we covered the VIX. Let's take a look at the, the bonds have not been much of a help the last day or so either. Check this out. Stalled at range high today. And when I say today, I mean Tuesday. It's, um, it's around 1023 on Tuesday. Nasty outside day here. And there is some potential even for a move back down to the channel low and 50-day moving average here. So keep an eye on the 100 MA. And I had told you this in the weekend video, the real story of the market was going to be 100 MAs, and they seem to be rejecting. We're seeing that in the queues. We're seeing it in SPY, obviously with the futures, which we'll get to, and now here in bonds as well. So uh, bulls really do need to get themselves back up here over the 100 MA, and if not, we could pull back, and this could be a little bit of sour grapes on the tech trade. I think you also really need to see oil kind of roll over more um, convincingly, and then that money could then flow back into the tech trade, because that's, you know, the kind of growth stories, the more growthy names, as opposed to the um, change in cycle names. And then today, the massive outside day in the te- in the 10-year bond w- was not was not good. This Look, we talked about this as being supportive here on the backside of the old channel. We had talked about getting there. We got there, but we had this massive outside reversal day. Uh, I'd be curious to see here if we get some kind of a higher low and then over the two-day highs, we could play for a move back up to the 20 MA and 50 MA, maybe even fill the gap. You could do that with TLT. I, I know that TLT is the 20 the um, the 20 year, but you know you could short that just the same because you know this stuff will all start moving to not quite uh, the one-to-one correlation, but it'll it'll you know probably beef it up there. Or if you want to you know, do 10 year. I, I don't really know of a great way to do 10 year treasuries. If someone knows an easy way in retail, please let me know because I don't believe you can truly really trade TNX here. This is, of course, the 10 year yield treasury index. So if this keeps rallying, you know, rates will be going up and that won't be good news for for the market. So keep an eye on this 10 year. That's, uh, that's been pretty crucial to the bounce we've been seeing. As far as XLF goes, I mean, it bounced where it needed to, kind of. Really, 31.38 was key. We filled the gap, uh, which made sense to me, and we're pulling off. I mean, that also makes a lot of sense to me. You don't usually just fill the gap and keep going. Sometimes there's an overshoot, but um, right now we're pulling back a bit, and I'm thinking we could see the 50 MA and maybe even the 20 MA at 32.77 and 32.39 respectively and maybe even if you know things get kind of nasty even retest that 31.38 if um you notice we're one time framing to the downside meaning every day has a lower high and we're we're also getting lower lows uh just wait for it to clear a prior day is high and then maybe there's a play back up to the 100 ma but it's interesting to me that we saw all the major market indices get the 100 ma um kind of I, I want to be we did I, I know we did i actually just went through and i'm just remembering at etfs but we didn't quite get there in the xlf so that's showing you know some weakness jp morgan hasn't really been able to get its you know out of its own way since jamie Dimon and his um co- you know now that jamie Dimon decided instead of being a banking ceo to be a weather forecaster with the uh, you know the storm and then the clouds and then the hurricane and then the you know not so great earnings although they did buy the dip but now it's kind of sagging again and this could even get the 50 ma and we're not even above the 20 ma here i was looking for that 102.96 gap fill we never quite got it uh maybe we'll do it again we'll do it here um just keep an eye if you want to buy jpm just wait for it to clear a prior day's high i think uh goldman sachs which everyone thinks is so amazing um 
You know, I think Morgan Stanley is better. Uh, it got back up to the 38.2, and it's pulling off a little bit. If you're currently long, I think the 10MA is probably a good stop here at 326.16. If that were to fail, we could pull back and retest like 318s, and then you kind of have like almost like a mini head and shoulders forming if it bounces again. So just keep that in mind. The 20 MA has been key. That's where this took off from. I would think the first touch between the 20 and 50 MA, if there's some kind of overshoot, is a buy the dip opportunity. But also in the pullback mode here, um, let's take a look at the dollar. This also was a, um, you know, is a key component, particularly with um, earnings over, you know, foreign earnings. And we basically held the 50 MA, and this had a big screamer back to the back to the upside we're kind of teetering at a key level this is the downtrend line if this were to somehow break above i do think we could rally all the way up to between the 20 ma and the channel high but i think that area will be resistance into the 106s 107s and i think that area it was also a kind of a range high and i think people will be wrongly getting bullish on the dollar again and not realize that it could roll over here from a lower high but uh, very key spot here. Short term, I think you could use this um, range as a key. You know, over 106.549 is a long, and below 106.279 is a short. Um, but th this is key, right on the downtrend. You know, if we clear the downtrend, I think we do get the 20 MA and maybe even the channel high, which would be a check back to the old trend. And if we just roll over here, to me, this would be a failed move, and we could probably get back down to 105s and maybe even. Um, you know, still lower than that, but very key spot here for the dollar. Stronger dollar though is is not good for risk assets. As far as Bitcoin goes, this um, I used the opportunity uh, actually today in Coinbase to get out of it. I had sold some puts. We had talked about this a while back. The January puts was it January or September? I have to. Um, I'll take a look at that. I got to take it, you know, while, while we're talking here, just the two of us uh, or several hundred of us, unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, it's great. I mean, the, the big, bigger the audience, the better, right? But um, yeah, it was December, actually. Um, but we had talked about maybe being caught between the 50 MA and the 20 MA, and that seems to be the case here. So we need to see it break above the 50 MA for that run up to fill up the gap to the you know, 28,000s to maybe 30 plus thousands, or a break below the 20 MA, I think would signal maybe another retest of the lows and potentially a uh, even an undercut at this point. So um, very key spot here, and this is of course the Bitcoin futures. Ethereum, I tweeted out, and I think we talked about this in recent videos, was basically just a check back to the breakdown, and I had told you I was long and used this opportunity to book it, and here we are pulling back a bit. Uh, 20 MA, 50 MA confluence is going to be key down in the 14,000s, but you know we had talked about into the 17,000s as an opportunity to book profits. It overshot just a bit, but it is now pulling back. Shorter term, if you want to be kind of um, looking for a long, like let's say we get pattern failure, or at least maybe it holds here on the 10 MA, just use a move back up over. You know this. You know you got a two-day range set up here, so long above the two-day high, or continue short below the two-day low. Uh, very, very simple setup here with Ethereum. Um, MST. Actually, um, let me do Coinbase because I talked about that earlier. So I had been short puts around here. We got a nice quick run up. And unfortunately, I wasn't, I don't know, I don't want to say smart enough because I don't think it had anything to do with smarts. I think it just had to do with being a little, maybe in too many positions. I didn't get out of Coinbase here at the um, at the time at the channel. And then we got that bad news about, yeah, I guess they're being sued for selling um, questionable securities or what have you. So I put an alert here today at the gap fill and it went off and then I put in some orders and I actually got filled, I think, at or a little bit better than the gap fill, actually. And um, yeah, we do have a little bit of a trend break, but I also am cognizant that if we start getting big downdrafts in you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum, that this will get smacked up again. And I was also cognizant that we have earnings coming up as well as we had news coming up on both um, Robinhood and a couple of the other you know, companies that trade in um, in cryptocurrency and, you know, meme stock type of stuff, I guess. 
So I just took this opportunity here at the Gap Hill to book it. I, maybe, I, you know, I'm wrong, but I, I took, I be, basically I got out of my position with like a 33% gain or more. Um, I had sold these for like 335 and I bought them back for like 205 or something. So, you know, not, not bad, not, not bad for, you know, a few days worth of work and maybe a little bit of a headache here, but um, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't hate Coinbase. I'd still probably be a buyer on, on dips. But, um, you know, we got to see what kind of, um, you know, news they get. And I see they were down in a little after hours on the Robinhood news. And, of course, Robinhood. I'm actually long a little bit of Robinhood here just because I think it's a potential takeover target. Uh, it wasn't even down that much, but we'll see how that goes. They're firing more, still more people. And um, I have an alert set here over 973. If it could clear there and the 100 MA, I'll, I'll probably add to the position. But until then, I'm just kind of like small and wait, playing a little wait and see. They actually pre-announced their earnings and they were crappy. Um, better than expected crappy, but still not good. So we'll have to see how the market takes this. Um, the last couple times they've reported numbers and they haven't been good. They've actually gotten a little bit of a, uh, you know, a bounce, then a pullback. But um, I'm curious to see if we're forming a little bit of an, and I don't want to be reaching a little bit here, maybe a little bit of an in inverted type of head and shoulders pattern. Um, we'll see. You also have the potential cup and handle here, but very simple. Uh, it's got to get over 973 plus and hold. Um, let's take a look at this MSTR. Some people have been asking me about this. This is the micro strategies. So uh, their CEO uh, left, and I mean it's it's not good news. I mean I think that people have been talking about if Bitcoin breaks 20,000, this company basically goes bust. I mean, I don't really know. I don't really care. It's 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 sort of a sideshow for me. Um, you know, obviously, the stock is down way off the highs. 20 MA had been a key resistance. It now could be some support. And the 100 MA looks like, again, you know, like the number to clear. And if we were to do that, we could get up to the 200 MA. We'll have to see how that news is taken. Again, you know, they reported... Um, numbers and it was you know uh, a pretty big pretty big disaster i mean uh, there, there's no ifs ands you know about it so clearly a, a company that does better in you know a bull market and we'll see how it takes this uh, ceo news you know so keep an eye on the 100 and the um, 20 ma as potential supports but if it can clear the 100 ma even after this news maybe there is a run you know going up maybe the market's saying okay you know the stock has seen the worst of it you know, we got rid of kind of the um, the management. I'm always worried about when founding members leave and it, it could see some kind of a run. But again, I prefer to play um, more directly, just use the actual, um, just play actual cryptocurrencies or the ETFs. You know, it, it makes more sense to me than, you know, kind of gambling and using these, um, you know, kind of, black box type companies you know i mean i'd rather you know trade again directly just in the in the actual cryptos it's sort of like remember back in the day everyone during the gold run was kind of all hopped up and into using um what was it they were into um using the etfs or buying miners and it was like they all kind of underperformed the actual gold itself so I'd rather just use um, just be involved in the actual, you know, commodities and just actually buying the crypto. If not, use maybe one of the crypto ETFs or something like that. Let's take a look at uh, go speaking of gold. Um, had a bit of a nice run, but nasty little reversal day. I guess that also coincided with the dollar. Uh, 50 MA was kind of my upside target for a, actually a short trade. It never quite got there. But um, now would I short the 50 MA? Maybe smaller size because we kind of got close. And if we were to negate, like, say, the Tuesday high, it could, you know, maybe blow through and maybe even get a move up to 170s. But a check back to the breakdown, we didn't even quite get there. We got sellers a little bit early. I, I just don't really see the... Um, I just don't really see the, I don't really know how to say it. I just don't really see the need to be in gold here. If inflation's peaking, I, I, you know, why, why be involved in it? I, I just, I think that there are better, 
you know, more direct plays than gold at this point. It seems like, you know, maybe even the cryptos are better. But um, that being said, I'd probably be a buyer on a dip for a trade if it got back down to the 20 MA. That's where it resisted. This is where it broke out from, and it could uh, find support there. So clearly in a bit of a uh, potential pullback. I'd be very leery if there's a lower high on Wednesday because you have a potential secure high setup. So just be a little on guard if you're in gold. XLE, I've said rallies are to be sold, and so far that's been correct for a while now. Um, that being said, we did rally up quite a ways here. And you're kind of dancing with a two-day range right on trend in the 38.2. So it's kind of do or die here um, at 76.11. If it breaks the 10 MA, you'll probably get all the um, Momo traders out of it. But um, until this really breaks the 20 MA, like you could probably still buy dips to the 20 MA because that was where this really um, broke down from. And that might be supportive now um, if there are pullbacks. Uh, even if this keeps rallying up to the gap fill, I still think it's a good opportunity to sell into. You have so many people who are bullish on oil and the companies, and they keep, you know, it reminds me of like what it was like with the Fang and those names. And these were all people who hated it much lower. But I guarantee you, you know, if oil starts legging down from here from 92s, this thing could be at 85 in a blink. And all of those numbers that people are factoring in, will you know, you'll need cuts. I mean, the oil companies will still make a fortune. Don't get me wrong, and they probably are multi, maybe a multi-year potential run. But I think they need a pullback first. They, oddly enough, I think that there'll be a play for the fourth quarter. Um, damn, that's so annoying when this happens. But short term here, it is holding 92s. It's been finding some resistance around 95s. Um, you know, if Iran comes out with a nuke, that would be problematic. If, you know, things jump off and geopolitically and, you know, some other way, shape or form, that could be problematic. But, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of in the camp that this could see uh, 85s here. And I would need to see this back up over the 20 MA um, to really convince me that, the, you know, there could be a, a move back up to like 103s, 105s. It could, it could be the case, don't get me wrong, but we're kind of just chopping around down here and I'm sort of thinking 85. It's interesting that money flow is building into this, but price isn't going up much more. So maybe it does one little last hurrah, but I, I, I would be a seller on oil into rallies. I, you know, I think that, um, you know, we're going to be past hurricane season soon. We saw companies like Exxon and Chevron shoot the lights out as far as their earnings went. And we talked about um, using those pops, the 61.8 to sell. That being said, the pullbacks to the 50% FIB held. And if you're along this and you're trying to hold it like, oh, come on. I don't even know what the frick is going on here. I don't know why. I just, this platform, it does a lot of funky stuff uh, that it didn't always do. I'll just leave it at that. Um, anyway. I think you could use this 50% fib now as the must hold at 93.13. Below there, I mean, it could get the 50%, get back to the 50 MA, and then we'll kind of see. But I'd be a little careful here if it does start losing. I'm actually going to put an alert below 92, um, 23, 92.22. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say uh, buy a put spread, a long dated put spread or ratio and uh, you know I, I've been look you know I think it's eventually getting back down into the 60s so um, we'll see we'll see how I play that I mean you know obviously 81st or whatever 88s first down to the 20 MA but maybe I'd buy like 50 MA and sell two times in like you know a week or two out 20 MA if I could get that on for a credit Chevron so this got a, uh, I think it was like they had a price target cut or something, but look, I mean, they sold the pop to the 61.8. We talked about this again, gap fill 61.8. If this loses the 50 MA, I think it's a short. So keep an eye on that 50 MA. It could fill the gap pretty fast. Um, I'm gonna put an alert, I'm just gonna put an alert below the earnings day low. Oddly enough, I think you could probably buy it initially on the break of the earnings day low for like a quick bounce. Um, second time because like you're coming down from the high and there could be like some responsive buying at the lower end of this range 
but um, you know that would just be for an intraday bounce. But we're we're finding resistance at the 100 MA, and if the 50 MA were to you know like bounce and then come up and then to a lower high, then it could really roll over and fill the gap. I'd be a little careful. Uh, someone asked me about Apache. It's funny, I did a case study on Apache back in the day, and I've always been amazed at how well it's been able to kind of reclaim itself because the case study wasn't so positive, and this was like years and years ago. But look at this, they're kind of at the um, backside of the old uptrend line, and I'd be careful if it loses the 200 MA. I think below the 200 MA, you could probably even try short. Um, you can see this is sort of like do or die, you got a two-day range. So I would use, if I were long, and I'm obviously not, I'd use 35.17 or 35.10 as a stop. Um, above there, I think you could be long. Below there, I think there's at least a move to the 20 MA, and who knows, maybe even lower. Because, you know, like I said, we're riding the backside, and who knows, could it roll back over to 24s? I mean, stranger things have happened. I'm just curious to see, though, if we put on a uh, retracement number, let's say we did it even conservatively from here. Um... Didn't quite get the 61.8, but let's say if we went all the way in the Wayback Machine. Mm. Mm, this was close to the 50% fib. Yeah, I mean, I, again, two-day range set up here, long over the two-day high, short up below the two-day low. Pretty, pretty simple, straightforward to me. Um, someone asked about FedEx. So FedEx has been obviously starting to run better. Um, I think they made some changes with the management and dividend policy and all that. Uh, I'd keep it simple. The 200 MA um, looks significant to me. And if it loses the 200 MA, I'd probably be out of it because you'd be coming from a lower high here, right? So um, I'd be a buyer on the 100 MA for a right or right out trade because that had been resistance. It should, quote unquote, now be support, but um, uh, you're, you're t you, look, you got back up to some past resistance. You're now at other past resistance here from back in the January lows. Bit of a secure high set up here. Um, I'd use Tuesday's low as a stop or the 200 MA, whichever you, whichever you fancy. Currently it's 229.56. Uh, JB8. Come on, JBHT, JB Hunt. So this got very, very close to my sell zone. Actually, no, it, it touched it a little bit. It didn't quite get all the way. And now you're in a bit of a one time framing pullback. The 100 MA in this kind of like mini breakout from 175s are going to be key. I'd probably be a 50 MA buyer for a bounce if it got all the way down there. But again, we rallied back up to past support, which now became resistance, and it's, it's pulling back. Um, uh, what was the other one? CSX I like to look at also. This is a kind of a canary in the coal mine stock for me. Again, 100 MA stall. Could it pull back to the 50 MA, 20 MA confluence for a buy the dip? Maybe. And then what would you have? Then you might have the inverted head and shoulders pattern here, right? Uh, it looks pretty, uh, pretty clear to me. So I'd probably be an interested buyer closer to the 50 and, and 20 MA. Right here, I'd probably be a seller though. So let me add that in. I wasn't planning on doing CSX. Um, let's get to let's get to the futures. Oh, I, I, I of course forgot to pull up spy. You know, we always pull up spy, and then we I tease you with the spy chart, and then we go right right to the futures. Um, so a few things to note. We've had pretty much three tests up here. We had a look above and fail, which doesn't surprise me that we had a very nasty pullback. They tried rallying a little pre-market and this kind of look below and fail of the overnight low. They rallied it up pretty pretty strongly, actually, um, at one point during the day. And then you had the news, you know, with the Fed speak coming out, which, of course, poured, um, you know, water on the parade. But also you were coming up from the bottom. Responsive selling at prior highs makes tons of sense. So very simple setup here. I mean, it's got to get over 4144 and hold to go still higher. Anything below there can chop sideways and maybe even have a, a liquidation break. NASDAQ, again, actually a little bit of a lower high. Clearly sellers in these upper 13,000s, and we're actually below that key 13,012 breakout, and now we're kind of just chopping around. Some mixed results after the quarter. AMD kind of got smacked up 
pretty good. Um, PayPal was a little better than expected, and I think Starbucks was up a bit. But uh, you're starting to see some stuff peel back, you know, some some of the bigger names. So again, you know, I, I got to see these kind of double tops clear for still higher prices. Anything below there, you know, could just be chops, even rallies. I still like, by the way, selling into strength here. I still like selling, co doing covered call strategies. Okay, so uh, I've been get I got a lot of messages today about people asking me about buying calls and you know what, what you know is it time to long up here you know a little FOMO and it was to me it was at exactly the wrong time and you know I, I kind of told all these people you know like I'm using these levels that you're look you know talking about buying at to sell into so so just keep that in mind. Um, I, I still like selling into the rallies. I, I just do. As far as SPY goes, so we got up to the 100 MA, a little bit of topping action here. Look, I'm not going to stand on ceremony, but if we, I mean, if we, you know, saying I'm super bearish, which I, I wouldn't say I'm a super bear. Um, you know, I had been more bullish and looking for the rally, but um, here, up here, I'm looking to sell into the rips. You know, maybe we get a little bit more up to 417 to 420, but then I'd be selling into that too. And I've told you guys, anywhere between 410, um, this low was here. Uh, let me get rid of this. No, I, I don't want to get rid of that. I just put it in 410, 64, all the way up to 420, 76. This was, of course, the January 24th low and the February 24th low. This whole zone is resistance and we're into the 100 ma resistance which was the 421 resistance and then we drop like a rock after that so you know or it does it make sense that we're kind of finding some responsive sellers here yeah and we're right at the 38 too so that's key i mean if this were to fail here would it be t entirely inconceivable for us to pull all the way back even to the 20 and 50 ma which would likely coincide with you know, the four three ninety four seventeen ish area by the time it got there, or even even just the 10 MA back to 400, let's say. Uh, very, very possible. Do you want to be long for that decline? Mm, not, not I. So very simple. Um, long over the Tuesday high for, because this quote unquote shouldn't happen. And if we do, I think we go up to 417, maybe even 420. And, you know, who knows? Maybe if we get some good news on the jobs report or something, and we get some kind of crazy blow off move, maybe we even get up to the red channel high here. That would be amazing spot to sell into and to really establish a, a good short for the fall, I think. But look, look, we got a little channel inside of a bigger down channel. So I, I do like trimming here. If you're if you're long, I, you know, at the open, if we're not down big, you know, huge, I'd use that opportunity to, um, to book some profits and honestly wouldn't initiate new money longs unless we clear the Tuesday high. If you do, I think there is a little bit more up, but if we lose, you know, like this three day low, I mean, I think we're coming to the 10 MA and maybe even down to, back down to 394s. So 400 would be the first stop. That would be do or die. You know, we could come down to 400 and then bounce. That would be pretty good because you'd have a higher low, you know, and you could have a, a new trend within the channel. But, um, you know, it, it really better hold or we're going to go a lot lower. So the expected move into the Friday expiration is $7.31. And, of course, if the move is lower, it could be larger because VIX and all that will start popping. Here we are, 100 MA. We're still a little bit above it. We're back into these um, February, January lows in IWM. This is where we talked about selling into. And I think it's still a good idea to do so all the way from 88s up to 190. Um, and then we'll see. The 20 MA could be a buy the dip opportunity. 2050 MA confluence, I think, could be a buy the dip opportunity. And you know, if we lose the 10 MA, I think it's it's going to get smacked. So very key spot here. Expected move is four dollars and eighteen cents. Dia is already breaking down here. Sorry, um, hit the 100 MA, and this has been you know the kind of stronger one. We didn't even quite get up to the range high, and we're pulling back. This 10 MA, like let's call it 322.69 to 323, is do or die. Because that's the 10 MA and the um, also the February low. Now, if that fails, I think it's like almost a. Sh <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a straight shot down to the trend line and maybe even the 20 and 50 MA conflu confluence down around 316. So very key spot. I'm going to put an alert here though, because this is the move that shouldn't happen. If we got over 327, let's say 79. 
Um, that to me would be a long. So, oops. Row, row long with a, you know, with a tight stop. If we could clear there, I think we go up to 322s and who knows, maybe even up to 340. And then that to me would be the, the really the great short here because this is be back to the um, December lows and, you know, 200 MA resistance. Often what happens is when you trade above the 200 MA, you sucker in a lot of longs. And then once you crack below it, it's a nasty short, you know, so that, that, and then I think you could come all the way, you know, really come all the way back down. So keep an eye on that. Expected move is $4.98, so just a little below 5 bucks. Boeing actually has um, been acting a lot better, but it got into the breakdown area, and this is when everyone was chasing it, and here we are pulling back. Um, I'd probably be a 50 MA buyer. Um, you know, they reported numbers. They got some favorable info, you know, info. We couldn't quite get to the 200 MA, though which again shows you it's still a bit of a bear market. It's overbought here in terms of the money flow. And I'd be keeping an eye on trend if it does get back there, you know, cause that's kind of a dire situation. I'm gonna draw it in like this, uh, which lines up with the 10 MA and the gap fill. So 50 MA and old channel low, I think could support again. I'd be an interested buyer down there, but you're kind of up a little bit here. So, um, I'm going to put an alert above 167.33, so 34. Uh, that to me would be, again, the move that shouldn't happen and, you know, uh, would be a row, row long for me if we if we can clear that, like, let's say um, tomorrow or the next day. So just keep an eye on that. That could be the move up. To, that that to me would then would be signal to move up to the 200 MA. I think you got a pretty straight shot there. But until then, you know, it could just chop or pull back. So very simple setup in Boeing there, which I actually like. <sighs> Let's go on Qs. Seven dollars and thirty six cents is the expected move there. We had some good reports at Apple and Amazon, and now PayPal, which is good. But the bad news is, is look, we're back into the February and March lows and uh, the breakdown here from May. So this to me was a sell area. We talked about it and we're kind of riding the backside of the old up channel. A uh, very simple setup here would be a long over the Tuesday high. And if we did that, we could even get all the way back up to 323s and 325s, which would be the primary downtrend. So a little bit more up, but you know, what are we risking here? We could see a big move down, maybe even back down to 303 half. Uh, breakout here was from this like 308 half to 307.44. So we could easily tuck back into there for a retest of the breakout, which would line up with the 10 MA. So that could be an interesting day trade off the 10 MA for a, a little bounce. But if we blow through that, 303 half is the, is kind of like the, end of the line before you know we're really getting smashed again back down to the 20 and maybe even the 50 ma now i do think that this green uh sorry um yellow channel high would probably act as some support and we do seem to be breaking out from the inverted head and shoulders but it doesn't mean that we can't check back to kind of the neckline and depending where you draw that that could be 296 58 or you know it could even be up here around 303 half but i mean that would line up with the 50 ma so if we fail at the 100 ma we could pull back to the 50 ma i'd be thinking at least 20 ma 50 ma retest of the the neckline breakout from the inverted head and shoulders and that wouldn't even necessarily be bearish obviously it's not bullish because you know we're pulling back but um that could be an interesting point for me i'm gonna set an alert there 296.58 so 296 let's say 58. I don't know that this is going to happen, but I will be prepared for if it does. I'm going to say row, row long on inverted HNS neckline check back. Say that 10 times fast. So if we can do that, that would be an interesting buy the dip spot for me. I'm going to get rid of this because that's no longer relevant. But um, anything below, you know, the three... I would I would even say below Tuesday's low to me would be a stop or maybe even a short below 211.84, particularly if it sticks. So 211.83, I'll say row, row, short. And then what would you use as the stop? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Uh, the 100 MA or just the close? I, I wouldn't wait for the whole range. I know some of you purists would wait for the entire range. I would just use the close. Uh, 214.33, maybe a little bit above that. 
Um, it's just too big of a candle for me. I wouldn't stomach another four points, you know, but if it breaks back down below here and then gets back up over the 100 MA and close, it's probably, you know, a false breakdown. Um, for me to get long here for like still higher, you need to clear at least the Tuesday high, okay? And hold. $7.36, uh, how are we doing on time? Let's take a look at SMH. Very, very, very key spot here, right at the JP resistance line here, right at 237.32. A um, little bit of a better close, but I think if we were to, an AMD, you know, had us down to 235. So, um, you know, we're going to have to see how this can, if this can kind of bop its, you know, not, I, I've been quoting the Warriors way too much lately, you know, bop it, like fight your way out of it. But look where we are. We're overbought here and we're into, you know, some resistance. So where could this pull back to? I mean, could it pull all the way back to the 50 and 20 MA at the trend line? Yeah. I mean, I don't see why not. So 10 MA to me is the must hold, 231.38. If that fails, well, I think we're right back down to the 50 and 20 MA, and then it's we'll see, because then you're forming like a mini head and shoulders here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be dueling banjos again. We've got inverted head and shoulders versus actual head and shoulders. Um, key spot. Key spot right here at the 100 MA. Anything above, and we're still above, I think is still okay. But if we start losing the Tuesday low, 233.98, so let's say 233.97, my freaking platform is going to be lit up like a Christmas tree tomorrow. It would be row, row short if it if it fails. And, and I would think for sure a stop on um, existing longs, because this to me would be a, a massive, you know, failed breakout and we could come back down very quickly. So key spot, anything above the 100 MA still good, below no bueno. Um, let's, do in, um, let's do Intel first. Intel um, kind of blew up on earnings, cheap stock, probably needs some new management. Just a, you know, it's amazing to me that Intel basically was, you know, the, this big chip colossus and, you know, Apple went over to them when they were trying to really get their MacBooks going, the sales, but they dropped the chips now because I don't think Intel really matters anymore. Like when you go to buy a computer, do you like look at the in to see what chipsets in it anymore? I don't think so. I mean, most people were like, you know, buying, uh, you know, AMD because it was it was cheaper and there wasn't really much of a performance difference, if anything. And I don't even think Intel's chip performance is all that great anymore. You know, we're long past like the 386, 486, Pentium, whatever, you know, I don't even know what came after Pentium. I mean, that shows you, you know, just how important Intel is to, to, to the markets anymore. It used to be the Wintel, you know, Microsoft and Intel, um, Windows Intel. And now that's sort of kind of blown. Like, you know, I don't really think people care anymore about Intel. But that being said, I mean, it pays a decent dividend. And, you know, it's definitely going to, you know, the company's not going out of business. But very key kind of spot here. They tried to bounce it a little bit of a look below and fail. If it loses 35, um, 54, I mean, we could come down to 33s. And, I mean, I don't know if it's going to get back into the 20s. But, I mean, this it is a declining stock with 50 MA resistance. Um, you know, for the longer term, uh, if you could sit through it for a while, you'd probably be rewarded down the road, but it's clearly not, not best of breed. And you got AMD here. So they ran into the numbers back into resistance. We talked about this and, and even setting alerts here at 109. Did this even pop after hours? Um, I don't even think it popped. Uh, no, it was the high of, it didn't even get past that high of day. And here it is. It got down to even $90. And now it's kind of like bleeding out. It didn't, I, I will say this. It didn't close near the lows in the after hours. Well, we're going to have to see about the downgrades and all that. So um, 90 bucks was roughly just above the 50 MA. And that's where this really got clobbered from once it lost the last time the 50 MA. I'd probably be a 20 MA buyer. Um, if it overshoots like in the morning or something for a right or right out play just for a bounce back up to the 50 but you know I don't know yeah let's see I'm just curious to see if we took a fib retracement from the recent low to the recent high 8280 is the sit you know let's put an alert here at 8280 um, if it gets there like tomorrow maybe for an intraday bounce um, I'll say 61.8% fib of the range, row, row, bounce. Not to fall in love, but for a bounce play, if it does get that low. Um, interesting, the 50% is closer to the 20 MA. 
but down here I'd probably be into it in the next like day or two just for just for a bounce play if it can get that low um, 90 bucks is uh, let's see what that's near it's yeah it, was, it didn't even quite get below the it, I, you know I was hoping it would get to the 50 MA because look once it got I'll just tell you, if it loses the 50, be careful. If it can hold the 50 and bounce, it's probably, like, okay. That's really, quote-unquote, where it should go. Qualcomm, this got smacked up initially on numbers, but then Apple was good and it bounced. So if you're currently schwinging it, and some of you probably are, um, listen, you know, we, we got the iPhone build cycle coming up. Uh, just use the 20 MA. 143.88 if you want to use the um, the low of day here. What was the Tuesday low? 144.84. I'd, I'd use 144.84 as a stop now. Um, interesting that it couldn't, you know, it, it's basically caught between the 100 MA and the 200 MA, so one of those are going to have to give, really. I think we could just be caught in a range for a bit there. Uh, NVIDIA could also get some sell the news in these stocks with the Pelosi trip, right, to Taiwan. We'll see. Um, I was looking for the 100 MA. We'll see if we can get up there in the NVIDIA. That, to me, would be the sale. But if it starts losing 178.66, I'd be careful. Because then I think you could come back down to the um, 20 MA, 50 MA area. We know 170 is key in there. So that zone, to me, would be very key. And if it keeps rallying into numbers, I'd, I'd be careful. I really would. Given what we heard about gaming today from EA... Um, you know, we know there's some slowdown there. Avago, which is, uh, which, you know, was amazing. When the correction started, this thing wasn't even, like, budging initially. Um, and we had said, you know, it probably is only a matter of time until it does. Uh, this is at the backside of the old up channel. Um, sorry, the old uptrend. I'd probably be a seller here. Um, at least initially. It's overbought here in terms of money flow. And I'd be a little careful here with the Avago. Um, the last earnings was up, but it had been down into numbers. I'd just be a little careful here. I've, listen, Avago is the best of them, uh, granted, but I'd be a little careful here. We're still in a down channel. We're checking back to the backside. It's almost, it, it basically filled one of the gaps. And I mean, how much higher could it go? I mean, maybe the 200 MA? So I'm, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'd be, I'd be trimming here and into any further strength of Avago. Uh, XBI got up to the range high, then it came down to the range low. It's bouncing off range low. Uh, just use the 100 MA as a stop and look to sell it up, up, you know, closer to 85s, 86s, but looks to be bouncing a bit. If it breaks the 100, I think it comes back down to the 50 MA for a right or right out buy. But um, key spot here. Um, I'm going to actually put an alert over, because this one had a lot of relative strength. It's interesting. The NASDAQ was weak. Um, kind of today but this had relative strength but then the nasdaq was strong the day before and then this had some kind of relative weakness it was a little odd um i'm already a little bit long i might add to it here if it clears but um i'm kind of looking to kind of book out of some of this i mean could it get up to the 200 ma maybe it depends on the tape benign tape or not snapchat um you know it's interesting they reported and everyone sort of like was like oh snap it's a crappy company with a crappy product that I still can't even figure out. It's sort of like a messaging app, but you could kind of send pictures that disappear. Snapchat started before it had like those kind of like dog tongues sticking. I mean, sticking out, which Instagram basically copied. It was like the app that you could send like nudes to people with. That's really what this company started out as. And I, I just, they never understood why it was this high down here. Would I buy it? Yeah. I mean, probably because I don't think it's a zero, Although AOL eventually was almost a zero. Um, and, you know, these aren't all going to last, but, I mean, it's $16 billion here. It, it, it might be worth uh, owning a little. You know, at some point, there'll be a higher multiple down the road for all of these stocks. But I don't know that it won't get cut in half again, so leave room, you know. Meta, um, I keep hearing uh, Stephanie Link on TV adding. I, 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 if she pukes it up, a few days later, it might be worth buying the dip, but... Look, we're, we're reset here. We're, we're a reset. They had good earnings here. I don't know why it's not showing because I guess because of the split or whatever. But um, they had crappy numbers again. So they need two back-to-back -back good quarters for the stock to run. And it's not even above the 50 MA, which has clearly been some resistance. Um, it's cheap, but, you know, in bear markets, cheap gets cheaper. So 
I'd be a little careful. If you want to nibble, maybe on a quarter of a position here. Uh, Apple. So this was good, but we talked about selling it at the 61.8, and here we are. Bada boom. Back down. Uh, Apple will, I think, fill in the earnings gap. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, you you kind of want to own it for iPhone, right? So if the market gets whack a rude 50 MA, to me, looks like a great buy. I don't know if it'll get that low. But you could be either long over the Tuesday high for a move still higher or short below the Tuesday high for the gap fill. Um, pretty easy setup there. Anything inside, like if we keep chugging around here, it's just neutral. But you really got to lose the 200 MA and, you know, the earnings day low of day for the for the gap fill. But it's it's possible. Again, 61.8. Uh, interesting spot to be a seller in Apple. Amazon, um, you know, it's funny. I had been long, but then I... Um, I got out, and now we're, we're rallied, but we're pulling back. Um, this was the prior kind of support. I, I'd be careful if you start losing um, 133.51. But if we can clear, let's say, 137.44, because this is, again, the trade no one would... I, I, don't, I shouldn't say no one would be expecting because we're, we're kind of just up there. I mean, it wouldn't take a lot to get over there. Then I think you could play up to 144s, maybe even to 146s, the 200 MA, where, where I think you got to sell it. Again, 61.8 and full gap fill. It really should get there. But um, if we pull back to the 100 MA, it wouldn't surprise me to see this pull back to the 100 MA and retest the breakout around 128s. So just keep that in mind. With Amazon, Google, uh, cheap stock, uh, it was down into numbers. It's rallying. It's kind of still within the range. 100 MA looks like kind of the upper part of the range. I think it's just choppy for a while, but Google is Google. You know, they, they, it's, it, that is a cheap stock. You know, they have got a lot of cash on the balance sheet. There's, you know, when you take that out, I mean, the stock is really very cheap. It's almost at a, like a sub market multiple, which is insane for, for a premier company like Google. Um, I know Rumble and them are, you know, suing and there's potential discovery and all that, but I don't know. Um, Netflix. So it rallied a bit. I'd be a dip buyer here if it got back down to like the 50 MA. But, um, you know, I remember we were talking about this and I was saying, you know, I, I thought the earnings would probably, you know, I didn't like, what, what was it they did that I didn't like? They came out with something ahead of the numbers that had me a little iffy. But, I mean, it, it's it's not an expensive stock here. It's just a matter of, you know, content costs going up. And I personally think it's a it's a recession play because, you know, if you're not going out as much and if you don't want to fill up your car as much or if you're going to be unemployed soon, you'll probably be back on the couch watching Netflix. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we'll see how their model goes. I'm sure they're going to have some people who unsubscribe. Listen, I, I got a free year of that Peacock with my cable service. And I, I could just tell you the commercials are super annoying. And for whatever it is, 18 bucks or 20 bucks a month, I got to see what they charge for Netflix. I have the, the super one because of the HD or whatever. Um, I'm probably going to just stick with that. I, I don't like the commercials. And um, we'll see. But I know a lot of people will, you know, unsubscribe and, you know, go with the free model. But they'll have the advertising deal going with Microsoft. So there'll probably be some... Um, you know, some excitement around that. We'll have to see, but it, it's still going to kind of prove itself. It, to me, it just looks like it's going to be chopping around in range for a long time. So I'd probably be a seller into further strength around the 256 this area. If there's a benign market, maybe it fills the gap, but um, I'd rather buy it down closer to the lower end of the range or maybe do some kind of put ratio to play for that, you know, maybe being long one up here and then short down closer to like 170s. Uh, Tesla had some bad news about uh, the Chinese government delaying them and Ford, I think, on doing some battery um, stuff. But look, news always happens, you know, falls along the line of least resistance. You got two days of topping tails here in Tesla. If it can clear 123.51, I guess it could keep running up here to like 254s. But I'd be a seller here and I'd be very careful if it loses the low of day. Because if it does, I think it's going to come all the way back down to the 100 MA. Um, and who knows, maybe even back down to the 20 MA. So it's got to hold 900 plus. It's got to get over the 200 MA. If it can do that, it can keep floating up higher. But my play was basically for a move up to the 900s, and we got it. So I think uh, declare victory, book some profits, and yeah. Um, 
PayPal. All right, so it's funny. I had been I had been long and I was like short a put spread, and I was a little underwater. And I used the Elliott you know rally to get out of it ahead of earnings, which I guess didn't turn out to be the bestest of moves because the stock did rally. But you know I, I figured you know I took the opportunity. Um, it got back into the hundreds. I like it on dips now because they have a pretty big buyback. I think it's like 15 billion bucks. But, you know, like I said, we are in a bear market. It, it, I don't think you got to chase it by any means. And it's got to clear. I'm going to put an alert over 102.60. If it can do that, I'll resell a put a put spread. Um, in You know, I hate to, or maybe I'll just buy a call spread because I don't want to be involved, you know, with, um, you know, if it pulls back, you know, there, there won't be enough IV in this. Um, I'll have to see. If there's enough IV in a um, in a spread, put spread, I'll do it, but I'd probably just buy like a longer dated call spread for a move back up to like 124s, okay? Uh, very simple, and then I, if you're long, don't let it get below 96.62 on you, I don't, I don't think here. Um, Starbucks, they also reported earnings. It's got a clear 86.09, I mean, this gave back a lot. Um, 83s are a very key level. If it can't hold 83s, I'd be very careful. It's got a clear um, 86.10, so I'll put uh, row, row long. I mean, who knows? Maybe it gets back up to a hundo. Let's go out on the daily chart, so I'm not just kind of talking the uh, talking the ish here. Um, yeah, that would be where this really broke down from. Um, so it's possible, but it's got to hold 83-ish. I mean, that's the 10 MA, so and kind of break out. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be booking some profits into this, and then if it somehow fills the gap up here to 90 bucks, um, maybe it does fill the gap. And, you know, I'd be a seller between there and the 200 MA. So um, it's weird that I had the, I, I don't follow this stock that often. I'm not a big fan of their company for many reasons. I mean, I know people meet up and they go there and they spend a lot of money on coffee. It's a high margin business or whatever, but I, I don't I don't really like their coffee and I don't really like their stores and I don't like their politics and there's a lot to it. I think that they made a lot of big mistakes, you know, trying to be woke and really degraded their ex customer experience at you know the paying customer experience at their expense. So yep, could go a bit higher here, filling in the gap. I would use the opening five or fifteen minute low as a stop if you're long. Uh, STLD. We'll end on this Steel Dynamics if this thing would load. Um, <laughs> all right, it did load, thank, thank the heavens. All right, so this uh, rallied. It stalled at the 100 MA. I mean, it's gotta clear the couple of day high. I mean, if you draw on a downtrend line here, I mean, you're, I mean, you're basically right to it. So probably a good area to book some profits, at least, I would think. Um, if it clears here, I mean, maybe you get back up into like the 86 level, but I mean, 74.59, I mean, the three day range has got to be your stop, in my opinion. That to me would be very problematic if it can't hold there. Because look, I mean, you're basically up near a channel high and could it, you know, fall all the way back down to 65s, maybe. So just wait for either the try. What I'd like to see here is just to compress here for a few more days, bull flag or have some kind of gap and go above the downtrend line and then that's your signal. So I'd be a seller up into the um, to the downtrend line or a buyer if it breaks it. Always on guard for the look above and fail. Um, so I think that's it. I, there was one, someone that was asking me about an IPO that came out. It was some kind of crazy thing that went to like $2,000 and it, it like IPO'd at like $12. There must be a story there. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, to be honest, but um, I can't find the symbol here. Um, it was, believe it or not, it was one I hadn't even heard of. Um, oh, here, this one. HKD. This is pretty crazy, by the way. I mean, check this out. I mean, wow. I mean, the stock was $12 and it got up to 20. This is a medical device maker, I believe. I honestly, I don't know what the story was, but would I be buying this at, you know, even at 60, I think I was telling, at 2000, I was saying I'd still be a seller up here. So um, there's clearly a story here. I don't know what it is. Um, if you want to go intraday, you know, let's go like, let's go um, 
daily, intraday. Let's go 10 days. Let's do 30 minute, I'm thinking. I mean, if you're long this, congratulations. Uh, you're definitely um, caught something here. But I'd be careful up here. I, I mean, maybe for an intraday, I'd buy the 20 MA down at like 1400, but maybe just for a bounce because that seems to be where it's supported. But I'd be I'd be careful. I don't know what the reason is, and you know there, this could have a long, long way to fall potentially. Have a great rest of your week. If you haven't signed up for the super follower um, subscription, just go to my profile and click on super follow. That'll um, That'll sign you up. It's $9.99 a month, and you get a lot of extra content. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you for the weekend video, and uh, tomorrow we'll do an intraday update for super followers. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I've been doing these kind of recaps. Cheers.